Hey y'all, it's Alex from You Should Craft, and today we're going to talk about chains. If you're following along in my 30-day newbie series, this is day one. And if you're not following, um, you should be. <laughs> and if you head to the description, there'll be a link for you to sign up. So anyway, <laughs> chains are the foundation of almost every project that you'll crochet. As you become a more experienced crocheter, you'll learn about some other ways to start projects like the magic loop or um, like foundation stitches, but almost all of those can be replaced with chains. And for new crocheters, the chain will be the most common method that you use for starting a project. And in addition to starting projects, you can also use chains within a project. Um, so here's an example and these holes were created by alternating stitches and chains. So we'll learn more about that as we get further in this series. But for now, let's talk about chains. So here's a short one that I've crocheted. Um, this one has 15 chains in it. And if you look, you'll notice all of these little V's and each V is one chain. So this chain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 chains. When you see chains in a pattern, um, they'll be represented with the abbreviation CH. And if you see them in a chart, they'll be represented by an oval which could be horizontal or vertical, depending on where the chain is in the project. So looking at our chain, this is the top. So the part with the Vs, and it consists of two loops. So the loop closest to you down here, um, that's also called the front or the bottom loop on the chain. And then the other loop up here this is known as the back or top loop of your chain. And if you turn it, you can see these little links in between the loops. And these links are known as the back bump. And the back bump is where I like to crochet into my chain. Um, so some patterns will tell you which loop to use in your chain and others won't. So a lot of it is just personal preference and picking whatever one you think is easiest for yourself. But all right, let's work on actually crocheting our own chains. Okay, so in order to crochet chains, you'll need a yarn and a hook. I'm using 100% cotton worsted weight yarn. This is Dishy from We Crochet. If you're following along in the newbie series, you know that we're using only worsted weight yarn and we have both acrylic and cotton. You can use either of those for this. I just find that cotton has a little bit better stitch definition, which will help me show you the chains better. For our worsted weight yarn, we're gonna be using an H five millimeter crochet hook. But again, technically you can chain with any hook and any yarn. My hook is from the Bright Set from We Crochet. Um, and then both of these are really awesome for new crocheters. So the Bright Hook Set um, comes with several different sizes of hooks and it's only $10. And this yarn is $2.99 for this 100 gram ball. So it's really accessible for people who are just getting started with this craft. So anyway, I'm going to start by undoing my old chain and chains begin with a slip knot. So there are several ways to make a slip knot and you can do whichever way you find easiest. But what I do is kind of make um, a loop and put two fingers in it and then flip it around to create an X. And then with my thumb, I pull through the yarn. And then you pull it tight and you can adjust it using the longer tail of your yarn, um, the one that connects to your yarn ball. 
and then you put your hook in. So let me show you the slip knot again. So we make, um, with my thumb and my index finger, I hold the shorter part of my yarn. And then I make kind of a, like a backwards D. I put two fingers in and flip it to create an X. And then I, with my thumb and my index finger from my other hand, I pull it through. And again, if you were taught a different way to use a slip knot, that's cool. You do you. <laughs> All right. So now we insert our hook. And if it's still a little bit loose, you can pull it tighter. Um, if you're using your cotton yarn like me, you might want to make sure that your chains are a little bit more loose because cotton yarn doesn't stretch as much as your acrylic will. So our next step is actually making our chains. But first you need to figure out how you're going to hold your hook. And again, this is a personal preference. So some people do what's called pen or pencil grip. So they hold their hook literally like a pen. Um, you can do what's called knife grip, which is what I do. And, but really, any way that works and is comfortable for you is fine. And then with your non-dominant hand, that's going to be your yarn holding hand. So I loop mine through like this, um, where it comes in around my pinky and then goes under my two middle fingers and then comes out on top of my index finger. So here's the other side. But this is another thing that you can do whatever works for you. Sometimes people loop their yarn multiple times around their index finger. Um, some people weave it through every finger. Just do whatever feels most comfortable for you and what gives you the most control over your yarn. But so once you've figured out how you're gonna hold your yarn and your hook, get it set up with your slip knot on your hook and we're gonna make our chains. So I usually go put my hook over the yarn and then loop it through like that. And that just gives me more control over my yarn. Technically you could do it like this. Um, but I don't know, to me, it just doesn't feel <laughs> right like that. So keep making your chains. Remember, we're putting our hook kind of over the yarn that's coming off our finger, I'm using the hook to catch it, and then pulling it through. I'm trying to go really slow so that you can see, um, but chaining should go pretty quickly. Um, you wanna make sure that you're using pretty even tension so that your chains are basically the same size. Um, they don't have to be like 100% perfect, but you don't want some that are gigantic and some that are really small because uh, that'll show up on the bottom of your project. So, Go ahead and finish up making a chain of whatever size you want. Since today is just practice, practice it doesn't really matter how big you go. Um, but once you start working on projects, the size or the length of your chain will help determine the size of your project. So here's an example of a pattern that we'll be working on later in this series. And these different sizes of bows are created using different sizes of chains. So this short bow has the shortest chain and the largest size has the longest starting chain. So just keep that in mind for your projects. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll subscribe to the newbie series so that you can learn how to crochet stitches on top of your chains. 
But that's all that I have for you today. So thank you for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe to the You Should Craft channel and check out the blog for free patterns and tutorials.